afternoon. Welcome. This is KTN Business Today. My name is Peter Wakaba. On this day, May the 14th, Monday, first day of the business week from us here in studio at our, well, from our Standard Group Center Studios on Mombasa Road. It is Karibu to the show. Now, today, wide array of stories for you coming at you from different parts of the country, different parts of the economy, different parts of the world as we try to bring you up to speed on the news that has been making business headlines, not just here in Kenya, but indeed beyond our borders. Again, welcome. Now, we of course, we will be bringing you up to speed on what exactly is happening at the stock market. But before that, to bring you up to speed on the discussions that we will have here today, we want to talk a bit about the hospitality sector, why that has grown so much for Kenya, why that has grown so much for this part of Africa, and ask the question why uh, corporates from all around the world, a large name is in the hospitality industry coming into Kenya. To speak into that conversation, well, a gentleman who is uh, the general manager of Morven Peak, it is a big name in hospitality, and Les Flu uh, Flukiga, he is here in studio. He is a man with vast experience in this sector, and we'll be here to speak into why exactly they have broken into the Kenyan market and what we can expect from that brand and from the sector as a whole. Later on in the show, we will be trying to plug into the area of trust corporate governance and what that means for businesses at various levels, but that is much later on. Well, as indicated, we will now want to start with a look at the markets to bring you up to speed on what exactly has been the conversation with the various parameters of the Kenyan economy. We start off with a quick look at the currency pairs. Of course, the ones we focus on here are the British pound, of course, the pound sterling, the dollar and the euro. And the dollar currently picked at 100.33, 100.52 buying and selling levels, respectively. The pound picked at 136.16, 136.45 buying and selling levels, while the euro is trading at 119.93, 100 and 20.19 buying and selling uh, levels respectively. Of course, these uh, prices will vary slightly depending on to which uh, commercial entity you do work into. But that is the peg currently by the Central Bank of Kenya. Now to the Securities Exchange for a quick look at uh, the various counters and what they have been doing in trade. Well. Performance of the NSC, the turnover, 752 million shillings uh, worth of shares traded in the last trading session. Shares traded 23.5 million. The NSC 20 share index pegged at 36, 35.76 points. Uh, bonds traded, this is the turnover, 3.1 billion shillings worth in that trading session. Well, what have been the active stocks of the day? Those that have been driving that trade now. Safaricom continue to lead the pack. 5.38 million shares bought and sold. Cooperative Bank, 1.41 million. Equity Bank, 596,000. KCB, 352,800 shares. Well, the winning stocks, these are the bulls of the day. EGADs, as Samir Africa, Everready and Crowd Virgin. Now, EGADs. Trending upwards 9.95% uh, to end the day bullish, up 21 shillings flat. Samir Africa up 8.33% to 2 shillings 60 cents. FRAD trending upwards 8.11% to 2 shillings flat, while Crown Budget up 5% uh, to 84 shillings flat. Well, what have been the bears of that trading session? The losing stocks of the day Scan Group, Olympia Capital, National Bank of Kenya and Arthur River Mining Cement Scan Group shedding 5.41% on the day to 17 shillings 50 cents. Olympia Capital down 5.06% uh, to 2 shillings 80. National Bank down 4% to 7 shillings 20 cents. And Arthur River Mining shedding 4% on the day to 6 shillings flat. Well, that's a quick look at what exactly the barometer of the entire economy has been saying now to the stories that are driving that trade now this is a story around women in business our women who own businesses in kenya have been asked to get their businesses certified under the she trades program by the international trade center in order to benefit from the various initiatives that have been put in place for such businesses the she trades 
in the Commonwealth project will be implemented over two years from April 2018 to March of the year 2020. This will enable women across the Commonwealth countries to improve in the micro, small and medium-sized businesses arena to increase trade performance and competitiveness. Uh, today we have this project happening at KCC, which is uh, she trades in, amongst the Commonwealth countries. Basically, the program is encouraging women in business to actually uh, engage in international trade, which is seen to improve the economy of the country and also promote business for women and also to increase the trade regions between the country. And maybe we are joined here with uh, Nick Shad, who's going, who is a senior advisor of uh, she trade. He's going to give us an insight of what this event is all about. Thank you so much for joining us, sir. Hello, pleased to meet you. Your name, please, and what you do? Uh, my name's Nick Schlepfer, and I'm a senior advisor with She Trades from the International Trade Center. Why is gender important when it comes to trade? Um, uh, gender is absolutely critical because. Um, when women-owned companies uh, are able to trade, then they, they, the, the economic returns that they deliver for the country and also for women are, are very much higher than when they're, just, um, when they're just operating domestically. So it's a really critical if we want to achieve uh, some of our development targets. Uh, what does this mean? What does this project mean for the women in business in Kenya? So what we're looking to do with, with uh, women-owned businesses in Kenya is to build their capacity so that they're able to better connect with international markets and to, so they can increase their sales, uh, increase their revenue, create more jobs and really generally drive the, dri help to drive the country forward. Why did you guys choose to, uh, to officiate this program in Kenya? Well, Kenya has been a, a really important partner for, for the International Trade Centre for many years um, and, and we've, we've found that the, uh, the, the private sector here, in particular women-owned companies, um, really have a drive and a, and a motivation to succeed, which we think we, we have a lot of chances of success here. Thank you so much for joining, sir. Uh, if I can cross over to Dan Hatch, who's a senior policy advisor. Thank you so much for joining us. Oh, thanks for having me. Uh, please tell us what exactly your name is and what you do. Sure. Uh, my name is Dan Hart. I'm a senior policy advisor at the UK Department for International Development. Um, I work in the Trade for Development team there, and um, I have the pleasure of working with Nick and the rest of ITC on the program. You've actually talked about some challenges uh, that women undergo, undergo through when it comes to tr international trade uh, in the Commonwealth countries. So what can they do to actually avoid these challenges? overcome them? Yeah, it's a great question. Uh, I think um, one, of the, one of the key things that we've identified is the lack of support networks that, that, that women entrepreneurs have available to them. It's one of the reasons why we've got uh, lots of sector organizations along today um, and it's critical that we deliver services through those trade support organizations that are more tailored to women. So I think that's one of the key barriers. And uh, who exactly are your target market? Because you see there's a wide variety that there are women who are engaging in textile industry, there are those who are doing agribusiness, there are those also who are, are doing a farming. So what exactly is your interest? Yeah, uh, so I mean, you've, you've talked through most of them there. Um, within, so just the extra detail, within the agriculture sector, we're, uh, we're looking at avocados, um, beans, peas, a couple of others that I'd probably turn to Nick to, 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 um, to talk through. Um, but the, 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 the real focus for us is is women who are export ready or near export ready um, and who are looking to internationalize and our support is intended to uh, really kind of take, take them up a level, increase the scale of their companies so that they can, they can trade internationally. What kind of criteria are you using to actually choose this women? Okay, so it's, um, I think as Dan had mentioned earlier, it's quite important that, that, they're, that they're nearly export ready or, or that they are export ready because we're, we're working for quite a short time period. So we really have to, to make sure that, that just with, with a little bit of support and, and drive from us that they're able to then, to, to then go and, and internationalize and make those international sales. So that's one of the, the key criteria. Then also we're, we're looking for companies that are, that are owned by women. So we're, we're looking at around 30% owned, managed and controlled by women. And so we'd, we'd really encourage that if there are any um, women entrepreneurs that are working in, in the sectors that, that we're looking at, so that agriculture, textiles and garments and, and services, um, that they should maybe go onto the ITC website and then they can look and they can register their interest there. We, we, we're really, really keen to have them on board. 
Thank you so much for joining us. And as you've heard, Peter, basically the message they're trying to pass across is that most of the women in business lack support. And therefore, this calls for also our Kenyan government to actually support these women in that uh, most of the women, when they get these opportunities to actually venture into business, they consider their other fellow women. And this keeps on improving the economy of the country. Back to you in studio, Peter. Well, indeed, uh, good stuff there from my colleague, Julia Bueno, out there in the field, focusing on the trade and the initiative by, well, the International Trade Corporation to support women who want to go into exports. Now, moving on, couples will not have to share their wealth equally upon divorce after the High Court on Monday upheld the Marriage Properties Act. Now, in a landmark ruling, Justice John Mativo rejected the Federation of Kenya Women Lawyers FIDA's application for the uh, repeal of sections 45, 3 of the Act that states that couples should get what they contribute. Now, the judge noted that one could not walk into a marriage and walk away without, uh, with more than they deserve. The case generated public interest given the kind of debate the law generated when it was first introduced in Parliament in the year 2013. I also find that the bill section does not contradict section 6 of the Act which provides for liabilities in card during marriage to be shared equally. The provision was meant to curb situations where one party to a marriage would be left to settle debts in card during the substance of the marriage. Further, the assertion that the section infringes on uh, the right to property cannot succeed. First, the Act recognizes monetary and non-monetary contribution, which is, which is clearly defined by providing that a party walks out with his or her entitlement based on his or her contribution, the section entrenches the principle of equality in marriage. It is my conclusion that the bill section does not offend any of the provisions of the Constitution as alleged, nor does the section contradict any of the provisions of the Act. Having so concluded, I find and hold that the petitioner does not qualify for any of the relief sought in this petition. Now, in the wake of weak demand and weak market access for Kenyan products abroad, the Export Promotion Council is seeking to capitalize on the future opportunities. This became apparent at the official signing of the Dubai 2020 Export Participation Contract earlier today. Take a look. We need you to spearhead this and ensure that uh, we are able to participate fully. And I appreciate it. Great, that's a document that uh, the Expo 2020 Dubai contract for Kenya's participation. And we've been told that we have more than 400 meters square that is available for us to exhibit. Thank you. While there, I really pitched for Kenya's participation. And I confirmed that Kenya is going to participate in a big way. And I insisted on seeing our pavilion. I went, I saw the pavilion, and I must say, it is nothing comparable to what I saw in uh, Kazakhstan. So the challenge is now on EPC and others to make sure that we organize ourselves to optimize our presence there. I think starting now, where we encourage our SMEs to take advantage of the opportunities provided as we, as Dubai prepares. Set out there for SMEs to be able to start getting ready for the expo and have ready contacts, ready products, ready to show the world. Now, before the advent of digital cameras, folks used analog equipment that had film that used to take weeks to develop. But as much of the world knows, the advent of the mobile phone disrupted that industry putting a camera in almost everybody's hands and rendering photographers nearly jobless. Tobias Chanji has more on that story on this week's episode of The Throwback in Business. Take a look. There were days when the camera was a king, and those who owned one or were professional photographers were the talk of town. They were often strategically located, and using one was quite a process. Joseph Maunda is one of the photographers of old who used such a camera. In a race to us, how the camera was used.
na weka hapa ndani hivyo na unakuta hiyo film unakuja unaganisha hizi meno siko hapo unaziona hapo na hata shimo lako hapa na unapiga hapa hivyo unaikuta na siku hizi unaikuta basi unaingia sasa ikiingia unafunga hapa hivyo kwa hivyo ukifunga unapiga picha kama mbili hiyo film ukikosa kupiga picha kama mbili ama moja hiyo picha umepiga au ukipiga mtu picha hiyo picha itakuwa iko imeungua kwa sababu sasa imeona mwangaza wewe sasa kupiga picha hizi kamera zilikuwa siko na kitu ilikuwa inaitwa uh, inaitwa speed speed ndio hii unaiona hapa ziko na numbers ziko hapa photographers were the celebrities of the time and were held in high esteem due to this rare service wakati huo photo mali alikuwa anachukuliwa kama mtu mkubwa alikuwa anachukuliwa kama yani mtu wa heshima sana kwanza hata ulikuwa unangojewa ukifika kameramani amefika unapewa kama ni kiti ya lakini ulikuwa ukai ulikuwa unaonekana kama mtu wa kueleweka wakati huo ulikuwa naelewa picha ya zamani ilikuwa ni ya raha sana naona photo man akifika nyumbani anangojewa na furaha and no one could pose for a photo without being arranged or properly positioned by the photographer or try out various poses for this is a great occasion and sometimes a one in a lifetime opportunity the photo date was even marked on calendars just as it is with holidays eh sales ilikuwa mingi sales ilikuwa mingi kuna vile kama watu ni wengi walikuwa nawapanga panga narudi nyuma ukiangalia kwa kamera ukiona wajaingia kwa hii frame ya hapa unarudi tena unawapanga vizuri wanaingiana kwa hii frame ya kutumia hapa na sales ilikuwa mingi sales ilikuwa mingi hata ya kukata maua unashikilia za za mbeleni ilikuwa ukienda kwa studio ama photo man amefika unaenda lazima mjifundishe kusimama ushike vitu ma style alafu muna muna muna, 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 muna One, two, three. before the advent of colored photography all picture were black and white these were characterized by black gray and white colors what annoyed most customers though was the fact that the photos took longer period to be produced and this often meant a long wait Photoman akifika alafu muongoje mpaka Desemba ingine ndio hiyo hiyo photo yenu mkaone ni sababu ya film watu wanangoja film wanangoja hiyo film izunguke ishe it is a past that will make some of us freak out if we were to go back to the olden days Tobias Chanji KT News throwback business and did a real throwback there to the cameras of old and something that many many people may not have come across having to wait months to develop a picture now kenya will send 37 radiologists to china to undergo training on how to use ct scanners or computer tomography machines that are being installed across the country to try and decongest referral hospitals now according to the health cabinet secretary cecily karaoke each radiographer will be deployed to a public hospital in china where Scanners have been installed as part of a national program that has been started by the national government to make facilities accessible. The CS led a team of the radiographers and other stakeholders who came to witness the official launch of construction of a center for computer tomography scanning at Thika Level 5 Hospital in Kiambu County. The ceremony was graced by Mrs. Kariki, who was accompanied by the Kiambu governor, Ferdinand Waititu. And this is the you're talking about. We have the radiologist's room. We have the radiographer's room, and then the examination room. The most important for me is the need for us to relook our approach to healthcare. We need to look at investing in the kind of investment we are having today here. It is equally important for us to go to the bottom of the pyramid so that we look at preventive. We look at encouraging our people to look at their health, their, their lifestyle, how active they are, the kind of diet they go into. But it is also important we go into early screening so that we can be able to detect and manage some of the conditions that we could otherwise manage without waiting until we are in hospitals. Uh, this is an equipment that is used in many detection of ailments, both from orthopedics to tumors 
to blood related uh, um, diseases, cardiac, and mention them. Kajuya, ya machini, ya picha, ya nini. Ukitaka kupiwa picha, una tumwa uko the house. Na una lipiswa una na pesa sisi ni maskini. Sasa kwa hivyo, tumeretoa hiyo masini yetu hapa dhika, tumefuraia u. At least, we have been able to the big battle in Kenyatta National Hospital. And we expect that if you can give us another CT scan in Kiabu Hospital, we feel strongly that we can assist the battle that is there in, in uh, Nairobi. Now from Thika to Mbere, where sorghum farmers in Mbere South uh, sub-county are counting losses after thousands of birds invaded the grains that they have planted, leaving them with little to harvest. Those visited by the press said that 70% of their crop has been destroyed by the birds. They're now seeking compensation or assistance from the government to avoid recording total losses. Boniface Njoki is just one of the farmers from Riachina area who planted the Galam sorghum variety in his 100-acre piece of land after advice from the Agriculture Ministry and the assurances of ready market at Kenya breweries. He expects to incur about 3 million shillings in losses now occasioned by the birds' invasion and fears that he may be auctioned off by banks to recover the loans he took to plant the crop. When the press arrived at his farm yesterday, Juke and tens of farmhands were busy scaring the birds from the various corners of the farms using all manner of equipment. But the birds looked undeterred and unperturbed as they made a meal of his crop. Other workers were harvesting the, uh, the sorghum crop even before maturity in hopes of salvaging something. In fact, in kama zinakura karibu na mtu. Hizi niko na about 100 acres. Na in fact, tukua nafikiri tutaanza kupata maybe kama 2,000 bucks of, uh, of, of sorghum. Ile maybe tungeusa na pengine na angiri kama, kama sita. So, tuko na garama saidi ya, saidi ya milioni kama tatu hivi. Tuko na garama karibu, karibu ya sibi milioni tatu. Iyo sasa itakuwa ni asara. Matara, matarajio tunge, tungepata pesa mingi. Tungefikiri ya tupata hata tani mili. Nilipo enda ofizini kwa angirikacha saba... saba Subcount uko keretiri, iliwambia ma, maana hata hii maana hii ma, ni nitu nasaidiwa na wao, na ingine tunanunua, kama begu. Uh, Ulitawambiwa ni kama wana ajia, ni kuhusu hizi ndege, lakini wakasema wata, watakuja kufesiti. Well, sad story there from Barry, but on that note, we want to proceed to a short commercial break. On the other side of that break, our discussion around hospitality still waits. We'll be back in just a couple of minutes. Don't go anywhere. Stay with KTN News.